Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot. Today another exciting preview for you. This time it is the DC Designs AV-8B Harrier 2 Jump Jet for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is on the way, it's being published by Just Flight and we have a preview copy of it here today to give you a look at. The Harrier Jump Jet, absolutely world famous. I'm sure you already know what it does and what it's all about. But uh, just in case you didn't or you'd like to be refreshed, this is a vertical takeoff and landing jet fighter aircraft. It was the first of its kind, essentially. Uh, it was one of the only projects around its era that was actually managed to get uh, to get working, and it took a lot of experimenting and trying to get it to that stage. It's featured around a Pegasus engine, which has variable nozzles. So you can see on just behind the wings, and we'll look at it in detail in a minute, you can see that it can actually adjust where the thrust is going. So most aircraft, of course, push the thrust out the back to push them forward. The Harrier Jump Jet can do that, but also it can maneuver that thrust to go downwards, which allows it to force itself up into the air just using thrust. This is a fantastic uh, piece of design, of course. It's an absolute icon of aviation. It's a British design initially, although this version we have here is the second version, the Harrier 2, which was made in conjunction. It was Hawker Sidley originally worked on the uh, Harrier 1, which was eventually licensed out and built in America as well. This is the uh, modified, oh, not the modified even, it's the, the second version of that, the Harrier 2 or AV-8B, which was designed by McDonnell Douglas and then with... Uh, some collaboration with uh, uh, Hawks Elite as well later on. So this is a, like I say, a big, big part of aviation history. And it's great to see it represented in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's not the fastest jet aircraft in the world or fighter jet. It doesn't go supersonic by any means, but it does fly uh, quickly nonetheless. So it gives us some nice options to do some slow hovering and enjoy the scenery or some fast, quick uh, maneuvering around the, uh, the, the world of Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this video, we're just going to take a look at this preview version and uh, give it a bit of a flight. Uh, I've, of course, uh, I'm a real-world Airbus pilot, but I've never flown a fighter jet or anything of that variety, so I have no clue what the aircraft would actually handle like. I have had some goes on the DCS version of the AV-8B Harrier, so uh, yeah, that, that's the, my limited experience, and I don't really know what I'm doing with that one. But for this video, I'm going to run through the startup, we're going to look at the checklists, and we're going to have a go at uh, the hovering, the short takeoffs, and the vertical landings, of course. This is a preview version, I must stress that, so it is not fully complete yet. There will be bugs and things like that that the developer is working on before release. Also, for those of you not familiar with DC Designs aircraft, they are uh, meant to be fun, they are detailed, they have lots of systems, the switches that work and so on, where they can. But not everything works, um, and that would be partly because of the simulator and partly because of complexities. Um, so they're designed not to be study level, as it were, although that's a phrase I don't particularly like, but they're, they're not study level or high, high detail. They are detailed, should we put it that way. Right, let's get started. Here are the different variants available. So we have the AV-8B Harrier 2, Harrier 2 VMA 231 line, and there's a third version, the GR9 uh, RAF variant. So this had, uh, I think it was infrared sensors in the nose. So you can see some small changes to the visual model, the way the nose cones are set up and so on, which have been modeled, which is nice. Uh, in this uh, Harrier 2 Classic one that we've got, we've got two liveries. Both of them appear to be American, uh, American. Uh, I think they're marine liveries, but there we go. Uh, we also, if we look at the VMA 231 line, we have a few more liveries and options here. Um, this one's quite nice, sort of a dark grey livery. Uh, and then I think that's the, yeah, the Spanish Navy, there you go, and the Italians had it as well. Um, so perhaps uh, perhaps we should fly one of those around uh, in the in, uh, Nice. And we've got the RAF version with a few RAF liveries available as well, fleet air arm and so on. So very uh, th there's the different versions currently in the, the preview build. First of all, looking at the visual model on the exterior, you'll notice that it's pretty standard for DC Designs military aircraft at this stage. If you've used any of their other aircraft, you'll know what you're in for. It's not the most perfect set of uh, texturing that we've seen. You know, there are higher detailed visual models out there for the simulator, um, but by no means is it is it bad, but it's um it's pretty pretty standard, like I say, for DC designs. It's got um all the right proportions, you know, it does represent a Harrier, it looks like a Harrier, but if you get really close you will start to see a, a few a few little um a few little gaps perhaps, uh, like you can see the texturing here. Not to say these things can't be fixed or that maybe textures won't come along and, and redo things in time, but uh, that's sort of what we expect. It's not really the purpose of this add-on for me, or that's not why I was interested in it in particular. Um, I wanted to see this aircraft for the, the vertical capabilities because that's just not something I've used in the simulator, um, much to some viewers' uh, 
distressed that I have not yet used uh, helicopters. But um, yeah, so we're going to try out this. This that's the the key thing here. Really, does the vertical flight work? Can we use the Harrier like the Harrier jump jet? But here you go, just to give you a camera overview of the outside and give you an idea, and you can you can um, see what you think of the the exterior model. There is some nice um, sort of I guess that's PBR style texturing. Um, it's a little bit uniform for my taste, so it, it covers the whole thing in a sort of a similar sort of pattern. Whereas of course we know different parts would have different wear and then so on. So. Um, but we shall see and certainly not something you notice when you're flying the aircraft around a couple of details uh, this is a little weather vane installed on the front of the Harrier's flight deck for the pilot and you'll see this in the cockpit in a second this is so that we can see where the wind is whilst we're hovering it's very important for the Harrier that it hovered straight into wind uh, when it could because of course it needed the air going into the engines at the right angle if it was going in a, a strange angle it would eventually push the aircraft into a roll and make it uncontrollable uh, if it wasn't carefully created so that weather vane is there on the front which is pretty great to see these little intakes here are so that the engine can suck in more air they are automatically open when the engine needs to draw in more air than it's generating or than it's able to when it's still uh, an aircraft flying forward can get lots of air into the engine because it's of course being has been pushed in uh, supersonic aircraft like Concorde actually slowed down the air going into the engine, it was too fast. Whereas this aircraft at no speed at all, running at very high RPMs, would need additional air. So that goes in there. Very nice. Here's the nozzles. They are maneuverable uh, and I have them assigned to um, a axes, which uh, I will show you in just a moment. You can have different loadouts. So it, if you buy it from Microsoft Flight Simulator store, um, it will not have these different loadouts is my understanding. But uh, this is the Just Flight version. And what I can do if I increase the payload, you'll see it changes what's what's loaded onto the aircraft. Now you've got to be very careful with weights on the Harrier. It can't be um, loaded up to the full weight uh, and do vertical takeoffs. It would, would be too heavy. 21,000 pounds is the limit on that. Uh, it needs to be lighter than that, which is about nine and a half tons. So not the, not the heaviest aircraft ever, um, because the engine uh, only has about uh, I think it's twenty three thousand pounds of thrust, something like that. So there we go. So we'll just lighten it up a bit. We imagine we're not carrying too much payload, um, but yeah, you can you can adjust the different weapons you've got. But pretty standard for Microsoft Flight Simulator aircraft, military aircraft at this point. So we'll make that nice and light. Bring the fuel down a bit as well. We don't need much fuel. We're not going to be doing a whole lot today. Total weight eight point five tons. Good for vertical. In the flight deck now, and I'm pleased to say the flight deck is very nice. I, I do enjoy the, the visuals in the flight deck. It's been modelled to be accurate, and it, it does represent a Harrier quite nicely if you look at pictures online. Um, it does have a lot of switches that move. However, as I said, this is not designed to be full detailed aircraft, so some of these switches won't do anything, They will, but they, will, they are all clickable um, because those systems aren't available yet in the simulator, things like that. So... That's where we're at at this stage. This is a preview build, like I say, and also Microsoft Flight Simulator does constantly develop and, and new features are, are added, but, but there we go. So what I'm going to do is just get rid of the covers and chocks like that little switch down there. And as you can see, they are now gone. Uh, I'll also show you the nozzles I've got designed. Uh, it goes onto the pitch of the propeller axes, but there we go. So I'm using my second throttle lever to control those and that moves those up and down. Um, and there's, you can see the Pegasus engine sitting in there, huge great fan. Uh, yeah, and that is actually this lever here. So that's the th uh, th nozzle axis. One of my absolute favorite features in Microsoft Flight Simulator is the checklist system. I think this is just great for uh, people starting out on a new aircraft. It is modeled here, so canopy open. So that's this handle here, and you see it highlights the switch. I just think this is just exactly what you need, especially an unfamiliar aircraft like this. You know, this isn't the 737. Um, this is, uh, yeah, it's a military aircraft that most of us, including me, have no idea about. Um, so I can tick that. Landing gear lever is down. That's over here. Uh, parking brake on. Yep. And pilot visibility is on. I think that's referring to one of these switches. But uh, anyway, starting the aircraft. Battery goes on. Oh, let's do that. Uh, avionics are already on. Strobe light is down here. Anti-collision. That can go on. Uh, fuel lever open. Push. Now, this says push, but actually I think it needs to be up there to be open. And after a bit of experimenting and struggling to get the engine going uh, and then we'll put the generator switch on so uh that is down here apu on so we're going to turn on the apu gen it does have an apu the harrier so we have put the uh apu on the throttle it needs to be closed which it is engine start engage which it is left boost pump switch on right boost pump switch on Fuel proportion and enable. Engine 1 and 2 RPM. Now, 
I have been struggling to find the N2 RPM, unless that is what this refers to. <laughs> um, but that's already very, very high. And uh, 50%. So, I'm, yeah, I'm a bit lost in this flight deck. Plenty more to learn with this aircraft. Fan RPM? You can see here, I, I'm not familiar with these, these systems. Not going to be super functional. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator. But there are some things here if I knew what I was doing. So, engine N1, sorry, engine N1, N2, 50% higher. T's and P's as expected. APU off. It's already gone off. Engine 2, engage. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about this sequence. I need, a, I, I need a bit more instruction before I can work out what all of these do. But it seems to work. We can close up the canopy. I'm just going to turn up the audio and let you hear. Pretty cool, pretty nice sounds, definitely. Canopy closed, uh, JPTL on, oxygen on. That's the engine start ready, taxi, we get clearance, parking brake off, nozzle as required. And max speed 10 knots. So we know we're okay for a vertical takeoff. Um, what I'm actually going to do, change plan, let's do a conventional takeoff initially uh, and then we'll do a vertical landing which would be the normal way to operate this aircraft. So I'm just going to increase the payload a bit. There we go, we'll put ourselves up to about 10 and a half tons. So a bit too heavy for a vertical takeoff and I'll show you a, a more standard Harrier takeoff. Let's go then, parking brake released, Th uh, nozzles are full forward, that's displayed over here with the nozzle degrees, so you can see there. So now if I rev up the engine, hopefully you can hear it okay, uh, it just moves forward. Now the Harrier taxis quite slowly, it's got these um, outboard landing gear that make it uh, quite awkward in, in sort of strong crosswinds and things like that, um, or it certainly feels to me so far, but uh, yeah, so nice gentle taxi speeds. Now we're going to head out to the runway. And you can see the uh, little wind vector swinging around. So if we find a windsock anywhere, we can see that it would actually be a tailwind if we go in this direction. So we're going to line up and take off in the other direction. So let's do that. And this should work with the, the wind. So we'll run our next checklist. Taxi checklist. Oh, we've done all that. Uh, so take off. Landing light can go on. Navigation lights on, and if you're not sure, you can highlight it, which I really like. Let me slow down. On. V still switch as required. So this is the flap switch. So you can have it in auto. You can have it in uh, stall, where it will um, be ready for the vertical takeoffs and landings, or we can have it in. Uh, the cruise position. So I'm going to put it into, I think, auto, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I, maybe I should do a stall. We're doing a short takeoff this time. Let's do a short takeoff. So there's lots of flaps out. Nozzle limiter as required. So the nozzle limiter is something pilots will just use. It's this switch here. It does move. And what it's for is to um, make sure that for our weight, we don't put the nozzles too far down, i.e. we don't try and hover, I think is the idea. Anyway, I'm going to just move it right out of the way because I don't know what position it should be in. But if I would worked out from some calculations, I suppose, which nozzle I want for takeoff, I could limit the nozzle position to that setting. Um, and it does work. You'll see that if I set the limiter uh, like there and then try and go past it, it gets driven back. And then put it up, move that forwards. There you go. Quite a neat feature. Good, so that's now out of the way so we can move the uh, the nozzles as we need to, which is what I want. Uh, VTOR nozzle angle as required. So I'm going to leave it initially behind. So I have no idea what the procedure is for this, but what we're going to do is something I've found online somewhere is that if we accelerate around 65 knots, I'll shove the nozzles down uh, and then hopefully launch the aircraft up into the air. Elevator trim is set five up. Throttle as required for weight. So rotate 120 knots, raise degrees, to t raise nose to 10 degrees and hold. But I'm going to uh, cheat and I'm going to go a bit earlier. I'm going to put the nozzles down and see what happens. Um, and then gear's got to be up before 250. Okay, that's the end of that checklist. We know the wind, so. Close that. 
which gets rid of that little eye. And there we go. Some nice sounds, certainly. See the HUD is uh, yeah working as you'd expect, moving around with as your, with your head position adjusts, which is great. Okay, so remember here nozzles full back, by which I mean that they are pointing straight behind us. We're going to go full power. I don't know the power settings, and then at 65 knots I'm going to shove the nozzles down. Okay, let's go. And 65, nozzles down, rotate, and up we go. As you can see, a lot shorter. We'll put the gear up. And start bringing the nozzles back forwards. I've definitely got this wrong. <laughs> and then I'm gently moving that nozzle lever forwards. Which is giving us air over the wings. 150 knots. Let's bring the flaps to auto and 200 knots, full forward nozzles, Altitude. it's now like a normal aeroplane. It does even have an auto trim system once you go above 250 knots, so there we go. So that is our short takeoff, I have no idea, I'm sure that's wrong, uh, anyone who plays DCS will definitely be telling me that shortly I'm sure. But um, it does work, crucially. The, the nozzle's thrust vectoring does work. You saw there it shoved us into the air. And that's, that's what I wanted to see working in this, this version of the Harrier. Very important to me that we could get that up and running. So now we just have ourselves in the, the, the siege of a fast jet. It's not the fastest jet, as we said, but it's great fun. It makes some nice G noises, uh, and it's got like, that altitude warning you hear. So it's, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Not entirely convinced about this weather vane at these high speeds, but we're doing 430 knots. I'd expect it to be pointing pretty much straight back unless we were out of trim significantly. Um, so there we go. So what I'm going to do is just turn that. I'm, I'm going to stop talking and let you enjoy the audio a bit. Just some thoughts on the flight model. I do enjoy it at the high speed range in the conventional sort of flying sense. Uh, I find that in the conventional uh, setup it is slightly uh, difficult in the low speed range, but that could be the way I'm operating the aircraft, or it could be a few bugs still in this preview build. However, I find the hovering aspect incredibly enjoyable. It's surprisingly maneuverable. There are a couple of bugs in there still, but it is, uh, it is a real treat. You can really maneuver it around uh, in the hover quite nicely, as you'll see later in this video. So great fun, of course. We all love flying around in maneuverable um, fast jet aircraft. So what else can we uh, have a look at? Let's have a look at the uh, lighting. So it does have, of course, the night lighting system. Uh, if we drop the lights down, move this, I love this feature of Microsoft Flight Simulator. There we go. And now we have the nice green military style lighting in the flight deck. Absolutely lovely. Uh, and on the outside, look at that. Looking very sinister. It also includes the, what they refer to as slime lights or formation lights. Those you can see here. So these are used by pilots to form up on each other. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see why they get the name slime lights. Very cool. So that's all functioning and correct, as you would hope. So what we're going to do now, of course, I've uh, delayed it long enough. Let's go and do some vertical flying uh, with the Harrier and see how it handles. So I'm going to head back to Nice Airport. Nice, by the way, is where we are. It just amused me that... Uh, yeah, Nice is very noise sensitive and the Harrier when it's hovering is just absolutely deafening. If you've ever been to an air show with one, uh, you will know that. So uh, it amused me to fly around Nice of all places in a, in a jump jet. Um, also, not sure why we're in Nice uh, in, a, in a Harrier jump jet. I'm not sure many have been to Nice's airport, but uh, perhaps the Americans were on a visit of some variety because we are, of course, in one of the American libraries. So let's head back to the airfield, rejoin, and uh, yeah, let's get some light back. So to rejoin, we need to, um, there's the airfield over there. 
Uh, we need to slow the aircraft down to 240 knots. We also need to be lighter. We can't hover at this weight. Um, so let's uh, make that happen. I'm just going to reduce the payload. Let's imagine we've used some of those weapons. Eight. Well, we're below nine and a half tons. We're below the maximum. So the Harrier would often take off, um, like I said, with a short sort of takeoff. Uh, and it would not have the power to do a vertical takeoff at the start of a, a duty with fuel and weapons and whatnot. And then it would come back in and it tended to land vertically uh, or close to vertical. The, the preferred method apparently was uh, a sort of crawling forwards with a slight uh, headwind. So the idea of that was if you're landing on an aircraft carrier, you'd be flying forwards slowly uh, at the speed of the carrier. And that way there'd be air going in the front of the airplane so it could land sort of nose forward, um, nice and stable sort of position. Uh, however, doing a vertical landing would be preferable to landing uh, conventionally because of the gear sitting right out on the wingtip. This gear made it quite a handful trying to land conventionally in certain wind conditions. And we will have a look at that today. So let's, let's actually increase the wind speed on the ground a little bit. Just a bit. It's coming from the west. Okay. Love the CFH. You've got to have a bit of, bit of wind in Microsoft Flight Simulator to get that seed looking good. Right, let's see if we can uh, now get the aircraft in. So we're going to reduce speed to 240 knots initially as we come into the uh, airfield. Which is over here. Oh, it's going to be quite a tight turn, actually. 240 knots. And once we do that, I can bring the nozzles back to 45 degrees. So there's 240. I don't want to do it banking, really. Uh, let's do nozzles to 45. Oh, I'm going to have to do a banking, so there we go. And now, reducing the power and raising the nose, I'm allowing the aircraft to slow down. Slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. And it's going to wash right off on the speeds. Oh, I need to put the flaps to VTOL now. So let's put the flaps in the stalled position. Gear down. Nozzles, I'm going to put fully down. Or put to 90, sorry, not full. And now I'm going to need to start increasing thrust on the engine. We've got a huge amount of drag out. So lift is going to be dumped off the wings. And it's just going to start grinding to a halt in a moment here. And now we're just starting to sink and sink and sink and sink. I've been too slow to get the power on. It needs almost full power to hover, although we are nice and light. So there we go. We've transitioned into a sort of hovering state. We are still moving forwards, as you can see. Let's see if I can bring that to a still. And we are sinking. Very important. Hard to judge, but you can see your vertical speed here. So I'm going to move the engine higher, 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 higher. There we go. Timing slightly. Right, so there we go. We have established ourselves in the hover. Here it is. Looks absolutely great. Love that. Love it, love it, love it. And you can see the uh, the heat blasting down below the Harrier. That's great. That's really great. Uh, good. So let's bring ourselves over to... I'm not actually sure where the wind's coming from. It looks like it's coming from our, behind us on the left, which I suppose is where that's pointing. So now I'm going to swing the nose round using the rudder. The Harrier doesn't have any aerodynamic control here, but you don't need to change anything. Because I've moved the nozzles, the controls automatically now uh, impact the thrusters around the aircraft. That is, these, there's little jets in the wingtips, there's one in the tail, uh, and it can use this to maneuver the aircraft by diverting flow of air from the Pegasus jet engine towards these little thrusters, and then it's using that to maneuver. So I'm not using the rudder here, uh, although I am using the rudder pedals, I'm of course using those thrusters. So we'll swing it around, and that's going to hopefully point me into wind. Or have I got... No, I think I've got this totally wrong. I think that's going to point me to the tail. No, that's into wind. No, that's good. Okay, so the thin part points towards the wind, which is what you'd expect. Great. Now we can push the nose forwards, constantly balancing the thrust here. See, I'm sinking, so adding power. It needs a lot of power, the Harry. It, it can't hover at sort of 50%. You're going to need most of your thrust. And then we can move ourselves towards the airfield. And you can see it says I'm doing 30 knots. We know we're not. That's just the wind um, added in. I love that vibration effect when you really rev up the engine as well. It's, uh, that's a nice little detail in this, this add-on. So here we go. Bring ourselves in over the runway now. This will be the sort of standard way to land vertically, uh, pointing into wind. And then we're going to raise the nose back up. I'm not fiddling with the nozzles at all. They're in 90 degrees. So that is the, the hovering position, as it were. Flaps are in that VTOL position, as I said, basically down. Um, and now I'm going to raise the nose, raise the nose. And if I pull back enough, it gets into the hover. There we go. Now I'm going to gently reduce thrust. Oh, too much. And hopefully, there we go. Settle down onto the deck. 
and we are down and that is the harrier jump jet vertically landed how cool is that great fun right next trick of course is the vertical takeoff so this is uh, very straightforward 90 degrees on the nozzle which we've got uh, and i am below the maximum weight i'm going to increase the thrust increase the thrust increase the thrust and essentially it's the reverse of what we just did so we can just go full power and she'll lift up off the ground there we go and now i want to transition to forward flight tilting the nose forwards get some energy into the aircraft Forward, forward, forward. Go on, aeroplane. Don't want to go up anymore. There we go. Tricking the nozzles now. Forwards. Uh, or I'm moving my lever forward, but what I'm essentially doing is moving the nozzles back. You can actually see it down here. Getting air over the aircraft. Gear up. Forwards, 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 forwards. Bring the flaps to auto. Altitude. Slightly dangerous Altitude. departure that. <laughs> and then away we go. And we're now in a, a conventional flying aircraft. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So the last thing I'm going to try is uh, a conventional landing. So it seems to me that this wind vector is actually, it does, it, it acting like a wind sock. It's always showing the wind, but that's the actual wind from the ground. So as I turn, it's going to point behind us. Um, it's not showing us the relative airflow, which is... Um, a bit of a shame because of course I'm assuming in the real aircraft it would just act like a windsock and constantly point straight uh, when you're flying this but I'm not sure of that I'm not 100% love that sound and if you look outside I love the vapor off the wings really nicely done that seems to be improved a lot uh, since the last military aircraft I flew in, in Microsoft Flight Simulator right let's bring ourselves around um, back to the other side because otherwise we're landing the tailwind so we land on 2-2 we're we'll doing a conventional style landing. So I'm going to put the flaps into stall mode. So just powering back down to stall. Uh, I'm going to drop the landing gear. 230 knots. And I will do the head tracking with this. Right, round we go. Keeping the power on, lots of drag from those flaps. Which are rather large, although they are, they do seem to automatically choose what they want to do. So perhaps I'm running a bit fast here, <laughs> I would say so. Bit of a crossing from the right. Lowering the power. There you go, see the flaps deploying. And there is a bit of a wobbly touchdown. Using the flight controls to keep it level, getting on the brakes. But you can see it's actually more of, seems more of a handful with the yeah, to fly it to fly it uh, conventionally. Whereas the the vertical stuff seems seems much more manageable. So in the Italian version of the area, we'll just uh, just something to show you as you move the uh, nozzles the heat blur does change with it look at that very nice nice to see that
So that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Just a look at a quite a fun and uh, different sort of aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It is a preview build, as I said, so uh, things will be changing, I'm sure, before release. Uh, but hopefully this has just given you a bit of an idea of what it's all about. There will be plenty more videos, can guides and live streams of the, uh, plenty of different aircraft, as well as, of course, the Airbus on the channel. So do be subscribed if you'd like to see those. We'll see you again in another of those videos on live streams soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.